22 Jump Street is a film that if you told me a couple of years ago that I would not only go and see it but enjoy it as much as I did, I would probably have laughed in your face. The reason being is that I thought before I saw 21 Jump Street that it would be terrible. It was a reboot slash remake of a series that I'd never really watched but had a sort of passing knowledge of and it just wasn't really my thing. Um, I, I do think that sort of your big budget American comedies are very hard to get right. However, one night I was bored, checked out 21 Jump Street on Netflix and actually really enjoyed it, thought it was so much better than it had any right to be. So when the sequel, 22 Jump Street, came out, and it has all the same cast returning, so you've got Jonah Hill as Schmidt, um, Channing Tatum as Jenko, you've got Phil Lord and Christopher Miller coming back as directors. I was a, I was quite actually excited to see this movie, especially the fact that the two directors have since, in between the Jump Street movies, made um, the Lego movie, which probably is my favourite film of 2014 so far. All this sort of made me very excited to see 22 Jump Street. So going in, I don't want to say I had high expectations, but I was just sort of excited to see it because the first one was such a, a pleasant surprise. Now, um, let's get the plot out of the way. So um, th there isn't much of a plot, to be honest with you. It's basically a retread of the plot of the first film in that they, uh, Schmidt, Schmidt and Jenko are tasked with infiltrating and going undercover uh, in a college to find a drug dealer and a drug supplier which is basically a carbon copy of the story of the first film, just transplanted to college this time instead of high school. So, straight away, what the, um, the, the makers have the good sense to do is to point out and make fun of the fact that this film is, you know, a thinly veiled retread of the first one. You know, all, all the, the dialogue in this movie at the beginning when they're setting up the exposition, setting up the circumstances, etc. It is very meta and it pokes fun at the fact that, you know, sequels normally do just want to do the same thing again but bigger. And uh, that's basically the running gag throughout this movie. Now, while I enjoy uh, your sort of meta sense of humour, um, Community, for example, the TV series, is, is one of my t favourite TV series of all time. Uh, it's If you haven't seen Community, go check it out. So, I'm on board with, with meta. Um, I do feel that sometimes 22 Jump Street isn't quite as smart as it thinks it is. Uh, you know, sometimes I feel a bit like, and, and this is a similar criticism I had uh, with Cabin in the Woods, which... Um, was another very sort of meta film but it was horror rather than comedy in as much as it's it's all right sort of pointing out the tropes and cliches of the genre or in this case of sequels but you actually have to sort of play with those tropes and cliches and maybe invert them or, or turn them on the head, whatever the case may be. Do something interesting with them to sort of justify uh, those gags earlier on. Now, it does go some way to do that. You know, it's um, halfway through the movie, there is a joke that the department has run out of money so they can't possibly blow anything more, uh, anything else up or, or spend any more money on anything. And uh, they proceed to do, you know, sort of bigger and bigger action sequences which, you know, is, is something I enjoyed, but I, I didn't feel like the concept was quite followed through on until the end credits. Now, I won't give away what the end credits are, but uh, I imagine by now most of people who had the intention of seeing this movie will have seen it. The end credits are probably the best gag in the movie, and that's not, you know, a backhanded compliment, because the movie does have plenty of good gags. I laughed out loud, at, you know, a good few times through this movie, but they saved the best till last, and I thought the end credits were actually genuinely quite Quite funny and it makes you wonder where they will go for a 23 Jump Street or Jump Street 3, whatever they end up calling it. They'll no doubt do another sequel. Um, so that's the uh, the basic plot and, and sort of how I feel about the um, the sense of humour throughout it. The, the film itself is at its best when it's not just being a carbon copy and not just commenting on the fact it is a carbon copy of the first movie. You know, when um, everything gets a little bit bigger, a bit more whimsical, there's a, a scene where Schmidt and Jenko are tripping on uh, the drug that they're trying to uh, track down the, the dealer for. Um, and that scene's probably one of the standout moments in the movie. Phil Lord and Christopher Miller are at the best when they have the most sort of um, anarchy on screen or, or the most sort of whimsical um, ideas because you look at the Lego movie and that's probably the best film they've made so far and also you know they did Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs as well. 
that's when they're, they're really at their best and the, you can see glimpses of that in the Jump Street movies and it, those moments really do make these movies worth watching. Um, what else was good was that the chemistry between Jonah Hill and Channing Tatum is still there and um, they do play up that relationship and um, also play it like a sort of old married couple who you know want to see other people and it does go some way into talking about and I'm probably giving it more credit than it's actually due, but it goes some way to talking about male friendships, and not necessarily just male friendships, but friendships in general, and about how opposites attract, and and you know those sorts of themes. And it's not you know it's not a deep movie by any stretch of the imagination, but there's probably just enough um, between the characters sort of bubbling under the surface that that saves it from being a a, a one-time watch. Like I, I imagine that once this is out on a uh, home video or on blu-ray or whatever and um, I imagine that I would watch this again um, for that stuff so the, there's enough in there to, to make you rewatch it the um the, the villains are, are somewhat forgettable. I mean, you have Peter Stormare, who's just such a great actor. He's, he's playing one of the villains, and, you know, his shtick in this movie is that uh, crime was so much better in the 90s, um, stuff like that. So, um, the villains ultimately are kind of forgettable, but... Um, I won't give away who the other one is, but you know they they they're fine. Um, Ice Cube is one of the standouts in this. Um, he's once the department's given more money at the beginning, you know, to do it bigger and better. He's given an office that literally looks like an Ice Cube, and and there's a line that I think Channing Tatum says that's that you, like, um, oh, that looks like a giant cube of ice. And there's little gags around that, and the way that they all bounce off each other with with Ice Cube is is pretty funny and. I do like Ice Cube in these movies. It's nice to see Nick Offerman again, you know, Ron Swanson um, in this, returning as the uh, police chief or, or whatever his character is. Um, again, very, very funny. It's a perfectly serviceable comedy. There's not an awful lot that I can really say about it because comedy is so subjective. But what I will say is that it's probably a bit too long and the, the idea of it copying the first film is sort of running to the ground a little bit. It's at its best when it does something different and when it's at its most sort of whimsical and weird. The chemistry between all the actors is pretty great. Um, ultimately the plot falls short because it's a retread. The villains are a little bit forgettable but it's ultimately very fun. It made me laugh maybe half a dozen times while I was watching it and I would definitely watch it again. Um, so 22 Jump Street, you know, I, I would recommend it. If you liked the first one or if you liked me, if you weren't expecting much from the first one, um, but were pleasantly surprised, check out the sequel because th there's enough there, I think, to, to justify seeing it. It was uh, pretty good. Whether or not it's the you know the comedy of the year, as a lot of people are making out, I wouldn't I wouldn't say so. It's not that good. It's a perfectly serviceable comedy with some big ideas that doesn't quite uh, follow through enough for me. But I would recommend Twenty Two Jump Street. It's a good time.